Let's end with somewhat of a sad but very, very positive story. This is the story of Brian Banks. He attended a high school in Long Beach, and he was a star, star defensive player. He was such a star that former USC head coach Pete Carroll even contacted him, and he was probably going to go to USC. Now, they were two-time state champions. His teacher during a class sent him to... Uh, another office on campus to go pick up some stuff. He met the alleged victim on his way back to class. Now they were talking and they confirmed with each other. They agreed that they would go to a separate place as it states in his bio and even in the 60 Minutes interview to make out. Well, that is not what she said, the alleged victim. What she said happened was that she was kidnapped and raped by Brian Banks. Banks was 16 years old at the time. He went into court as uh, he, he was transferred from as a juvenile to an adult court when he was 17. He was going to face a uh, prison sentence of at least 40 years to life. Now his lawyer at the time told him to plead no contest to one count of rape and he spent nearly six years in prison. It later came out that, well, he was innocent and no one believed him, unfortunately. His mom sold the house and sold her car to pay for legal fees. Amazing. The DNA evidence came back negative in this case. Obviously, that's a huge part. He waited for trial, by the way, for one year because they could not afford to bail him out. He waited in prison for one year for a trial. Also incredible. Now, after his prison sentence was up. He went home. He suffered from depression, paranoia, along with many, many other uh, uh, factors that came into his life after this troubling time. Now, he received a Facebook friend request. It was from the alleged victim. His initial response was, why? Why would you friend me on Facebook? Why would you want to be my friend on this medium? And that's exactly what he sent her in a private message. Her response back, I'm summarizing, let's let bygones be bygones, let's hang out. And he was so skeptical, he didn't know what to do, his heart was racing 100 miles an hour, and he decided to meet up with her, but tape, smartly, tape what occurred between them. In those recordings, she confessed that it was not real, that the rape was not real, that the kidnapping was not real. And it also seemed like, because I watched the 60 Minutes interview, if you want to see it, it was a fantastic piece. Link is in the description below. Her main focus seemed to be, well, that's a lot of money I got. I can't afford to, you know, I can't really give that back. That was her main focus. So he hired a private investigator, and then he brought the private investigator in for the second sitting that they had. They started out slow, and then he basically dropped the bomb on her and said, did he rape you? She goes, no, he didn't rape me. Did he kidnap you? No, he didn't kidnap me. Right away. And he even said in the interview, they, they turned the tapes over, right away he said, I just wanted to walk out right there. There was nothing else I had to say to this girl. There was nothing I had to say to her. So the tapes were turned over to Kim Hernandez, the program director of the California Innocence Project. They were hoping the conviction would be overturned he dealt with a strict parole. He had an, an electronic bracelet on his ankle to mon monitor where he was at all times, and he had to register as a sex offender. On May 24th, happily, he was exonerated. In the 60 Minutes piece, you see him in the courtroom, and he just starts breaking down, and your heart just drops when you see it. The fact that he went through all of this, all of this, and now it may be looking up, because Jay Glazer of Fox Sports tweeted this today. Gang, I'm reporting the best scoop I could ever report. My man finally has his dream back. Falcons have just signed Brian Banks. As I stated, he was a top football recruit. He actually had the opportunity to try out for Pete Carroll's Seattle Seahawks. He did not make the 53-man roster. He hasn't played in about 10 years. He's 27 years old now. So obviously he's going to have to put in a lot of time, I'm sure he has, to training his body and getting his body prepared for an NFL season, hopefully if he makes the roster. And he also played for the Las Vegas Locos of the UFL. Again, he's 27 years old. You know, it's a troubling story, it's a sad story, but hopefully, you know, you have to be thankful for Arthur Blank of the Falcons organization, giving Brian Banks another chance. 
I really, really, really hope I reached out to him. Hopefully he'll come on TYT Sports. I really hope that he will. But you also hope that he'll just make it at that next level. It's so deserving and it would be so rewarding for him to make it in the NFL.